Hailing from Bendigo, less than two hours' drive north of Melbourne, Lucas Herbert has risen to a world ranking of 40, making him Australia's third highest ranked men's golfer. His win at last October's Bermuda Championship gave him a two-year exemption on the PGA Tour. And he's got an invite to play this year's Masters at Augusta. We caught up with the 26-year-old, whose golfing journey began at Nianga Park in Bendigo. I was probably pretty talented at most sports as a kid, so always played footy, cricket, tennis, um, soccer, whatever I could play at school. Played a bit of golf as well because the family sort of all played, um, grandparents and, and parents and cousins and whatnot. So yeah, I was sort of probably forced to play golf a little bit at the start and then um, really started taking a liking to it probably around 10 or 11 years old. The Anger Park Golf Club was where I grew up playing all my golf. Uh, they had a sub-junior program that I was part of when I was five or six years old. There'd be 30 or 40 kids on a Sunday morning. We'd go out and played anywhere between four and 13 holes. My dad pretty much coached me um, when I was you know, pretty young, but he, it was pretty basic stuff, you know, just get alignment and ball position and that, and that kind of stuff. We had one coach for a couple of years, Darren Page, and then I sort of progressed onto the next level and um, went and saw Dom as a party uh, in Ballarat, who, you know, is about an hour drive from me. Um, he was recommended to me as a, as a good coach. He'd, he'd coached other players on tour before. So yeah, I went over there and saw him when I was about 13. And um, he coached me basically all the way through to where I am now. I had one, uh, about 12 months with Dennis McDade. Um, Dom unfortunately moved away from me to Queensland and made it more difficult to get coaching. But um, spent about 12 months with Dennis and, and Dennis was great. I still, uh, I still use a lot of the advice that he gave me. Yeah, 12 months with Dennis and ended up back with Dom and still am with Dom um, to this day. I'd sort of obviously played nicely as an amateur and I, I knew that turning pro was somewhere on the horizon. I didn't really know where. I turned, I think I turned 20 about a week after I turned pro. So, you know, golf probably took a bit of a backseat at the time. I don't think I thought that at the time, but um, now looking back at, you know, it wasn't probably my biggest priority in life. And uh, that meant that, you know, programs that I was in here in Australia that was helping support me weren't the happiest uh, with, you know, whether it be behavioral results or, you know, they just didn't think I was going to be any good pretty much. So they, I was kicked, I was, you know, let go of a lot of the programs and whatnot and sort of made the decision to turn pro because it was like, well, I'm going to travel to play golf anyway. So I may as well try and make money whilst I'm doing it. Um, and that was pretty much the logic for why I turned pro. So, uh, yeah, I've, I've come a long way since then. I definitely learned and grew up a lot in the first two years uh, as a pro. I think where things really changed quickly was I played with Jason Day in the weekend at the Aussie Open uh, in 2017. And I th I mean, everyone around me sort of agrees we probably grew up three years in, in two days. Um, just dealing dealing with that, playing in those conditions. You know, he was, I think he was seventh in the world at the time. Um, it was it, it could have been really daunting. I could have shot 285s and, and looked really silly, but I, I held my own really well felt like I could play. I felt like I could really compete against Jace um, in the tournament. And, you know, that that gave me a hell of a lot of confidence. Like, you know, almost more proof that, yeah, like I can, I can do it and I've got enough ability to be able to play against these guys that are really good. So that was where it started. And then, yeah, I started getting a few more starts in Europe. The 2018 season, I never really looked at Europe, to be honest. I, I always kind of thought that's not really where I wanted to play my golf. And then I got the opportunity to sort of play some more events out there and I, and I thought it was a good pathway for me to get to the PGA Tour. At the start of the year, we sort of said, right, wherever we get invites, we've got to go and play them. We've got to go and, you know, I can't, I don't have the luxury of being able to pick and choose where I'm going to play. I've got to play wherever I can get a chance and prove and, you know, and go and win and, and you know, just play well, and give yourself a chance where, you know, next year you have a tour card and then you can pick your own schedule a bit.
I mean, that was a funny one because there was just so many things happened that week. I had, I flew in early and my clubs got lost. Um, so, ne- so I actually played the tournament with, you know, a brand new set of clubs that I hadn't, you know, they, they built stuff to specs and, and whatnot. But, you know, I played a different shaft in my driver because they didn't have my, the shaft that I would have normally played. And then um, they didn't have my putter. And there was just, there was a lot of little quirks, you know, it was like, has anyone got a coin? Because I need a ball marker. Like just little things that you, you you don't even realize that you don't have. So that was funny. I played with Tiger on Tuesday for nine holes in a practice round. So that was um, that was amazing as well. Uh, obviously, first cut made in a major. And, and just like Carnoustie was just a phenomenal place too. So there was so much quirkiness that happened that week. And, you know, an open championship is something that I think everyone should experience at some point if you're a golf fan um as a spectator as a player as a volunteer as a caddy however you can do it the crowds over there have a really good appreciation for golf they understand a, when you, they see a good shot that might not look good on tv you know you've you get a five iron to 30 feet but sometimes that's a great shot and they and they do really appreciate that um over there Yeah, 2019 was was pretty rough for me. Um, obviously, it just felt like we'd had 18 months of just trending quite quickly upwards. And we had all these dreams and aspirations. There was a President's Cup at Royal Melbourne at the end of that year. And I really would have liked to have played that. Um, obviously, the Masters in April, it was, there was a lot of just goals for me to, to get to that we set that were pretty high. And... I put a lot of pressure on myself to get to them and I uh, didn't succeed. Um, and I took that pretty harshly as well. There wasn't much I was enjoying about my job at that point. I uh, I wasn't being away from, I wasn't enjoying being away from home. Um, I was playing poorly. I felt like I had a lot of pressure put on me um, just within the sort within the team to play well, you know, my coach and, and everyone in, in the team wasn't saying that sort of stuff, but it was just, you know, we just had all these goals that we thought we could tick off and we just weren't ticking them off. So, you know, I was just feeling that and it was it was a real battle to, to keep my card in the end. It was actually a pretty good job because halfway through the year, I was really questioning whether I wanted to play golf anymore. quite different whether it's uh, obviously most people are going to have a swing coach but then some guys will have a putting coach some guys might have a short game coach mental you know dietitian there's there's so many people that can go into a team so uh, yeah I, I guess there was a process of like working out what I needed and the team has kind of evolved and changed into what it is now so I have my swing coach Dom um, I have a mental performance coach Jamie Glazier uh, I've got a physio sort of slash my therapist um, rather than any sort of strength conditioning work I, f- I feel like i get the most out of that so that's that's luke and then obviously caddy nick pew and i've got a statistician as well tom boise so that's probably our team our, our core team right there of, of guys that are pretty hands-on involved I, I felt like early days that the more i invested in my team coming out with me to events to help me it was almost like i was getting experience quicker than other guys because i would you know there was someone else there to kind of watch what was going on and, and tell me things that I maybe wouldn't have seen, you know, th- stuff that they would pick up on as like, hey, did you realize that you warm up, how you did this, that that affected how you played the first four holes. And like, I wouldn't have thought about that. But then all of a sudden now it's like, oh, that's really interesting you say that. Like, you actually got a point. Yeah, I'll, you know, maybe not do that again or, or I'll do more of that um, next time. And I, it feels really good now to be in the position I'm in and, have invested a lot of money and gambled a lot on myself basically um, and to have that pay off is you know that's that's really good you talk about being fortunate through the pandemic as well like having that win just prior and then obviously getting paid nicely from that as well meant that I I wasn't concerned about, you know, are we going to get back to work next month? Like I really need to work because I'm struggling to pay the bills. Like I had a bit, I had that luxury um, of being in some good form where I was able to, you know, set up a bit of security for myself and probably the team as well in that, in that time frame. So 
yeah, just the first win, I was, I, I didn't really think I was going to win until walking up 18 in the, in the regulation. Uh, I, I would just always felt like I was too far behind the leaders and, you know, I was, I was happy. I was playing well. I was, I was hopefully going to finish in the top five and felt like I was having a really nice week, but not to actually win it until, you know, until right at the last minute. And then I kind of threw it away in the playoff and then kind of got it back again. So it was just a bit of a whirlwind, but to sort of get that first victory was really good. Cause then that, that just gave me so much confidence going forward. And, and it's prior to that, I just didn't have that evidence, that proof in front of me that like, yeah, I can win. Twenty twenty one Irish Open, winning that wire to wire was yeah, it was really cool. It's just it's really draining emotionally to win wire to wire. Um, it's just very hard to calm yourself down at night when you've got the lead, and to do that three days in a row, it was it was pretty tough. And I you know I paid for it the next few weeks afterwards because it's just physically quite draining, but very emotionally draining to to deal with all that. So yeah, that that was really cool. But it was also something I really wanted to do at some point in my career too, was to win a tournament wire to wire. So, you know, it's probably some of the best golf I've played in my career. I felt like I had so much control over everything. Um, obviously, the last round, I lost a little bit of control there and um, veered off track a little bit, but to be able to refine that as well and, and get back into, you know, the the controlling position in the tournament and felt like I was really on top of that, that was, um, it was very satisfying. Definitely those two wins allowed me to feel like when I got around the lead that I was really good at converting it. And before I'd won Dubai, I just don't, I, I think I had no real idea how to do that. And now I feel like I've got a lot of confidence to do it. And it feels like, it feels like that's more likely to happen than to not win. I'd been in America most of the year. Obviously, COVID made it difficult to come back to Australia, but I sort of got to America and, and I just realized like this is where I needed to be. This is where I was going to get really good at golf. And and ultimately, that's what you're trying to do. You know, you might scrape in and get your tour card here or just miss on your tour card here and there. But like at the end of the day, in six, seven years time, where all of us are playing our golf isn't really reflective of one result here or there. It's it's an accumulation of how good can you get at golf because the best guys end up playing on the PGA Tour and end up succeeding. So to me, it was like, if I can just get very good at golf, the rest will kind of take care of itself. And that to me felt like when I got to Florida, um, I, went to, I went to Orlando, joined at Isleworth. I felt like, wow, this place is unbelievable and it's going to allow me to get really, really good at what I do. And that at the end of the day is what's going to, you know, that's going to make me money and win me tournaments um, in years to come. I had three weeks off, I uh, called my coach, got him to come over to America and we, we did a lot of work. Um, got a lot of divot patches in that range at Isleworth from, you know, the work we did those those two, three weeks. And yeah, we went, we, we sort of felt like we had three, four events to finish the year to really, you know, build some points up, get some confidence, get some rhythm going to try and flow into 2022. And yeah, first event back we uh we go and win so that was that was pretty crazy to be honest through the week like obviously it was just good building blocks we you know i made a cut on the pj tour like as a member and then you know i just i kept i played nice and it was like i kept myself in the tournament and you sort of if i could have finished top 10 there it would have been i would have taken that as a real positive that week so we finish on we finish on saturday and it's like okay i'm going to be playing the last group this is really awesome as well it's the first time i'll play in the last group on the pj tour so there was a lot already to take from the week before that last round. And then I got into the media and, and they said, oh, the, you know, tea times have been changed. The weather is going to be horrific. Um, what's your thoughts on that? And the first thing I thought was like, great. You know, I love it when it's, I love when golf courses are set up hard and I love it when the wind and the elements make it really, really difficult. You get out there Sunday and you knew, I think, you know, 17 under was leading and it was like, it's not going to follow that trend. Like one or two under today is going to be a great score. It's going to be a day of like, can you can you grind out pars? Can you not make your big numbers like your quads and triples and stuff? And if you can keep yourself in the tournament with you know three or four holes to go, like that's 
that's all you need to do. It's not going to be a day where you need to get super aggressive. I didn't know what to expect. Um, Taylor Penrith leading. I didn't know if Taylor was going to come out and, and play really nicely and, you know, leave us all for dead. You couldn't go out to try and win because you, you needed some help. So I think on 12, I made a birdie to take the lead on my own. And it felt like from there, I was just never going to lose. It just felt like I'd locked in. I'd found that zone that we found at the tournaments that I'd won before. And all of a sudden it was like, I, I just don't know how I could lose this. I feel like I've got control of the ball. It doesn't really matter where I hit shots to. I'm going to be able to get myself out of trouble. Um, I just know that I can win this golf tournament and I really don't feel like I'm going to lose it today. Yeah, it's really cool. I feel like it almost hasn't sunk in yet. Um, I think once that invite comes in the mail, it'll be a bit, it'll, you know, that'll, win it, that'll be when it's real, but it's uh, it's a great reward, I think, for the hard work I've done to get that invite. Um, the you know the years of sacrifice and everything like that, and obviously yeah, I got, I've got a lot of opportunity. The Open Championships at St Andrews, and we've got the PGA Championship as well. You've got the the players, the Arnold Palmer Memorial, like all the, these massive events that I've watched on TV growing up. I'm now playing, and it's just going to be a hell of a lot of fun. It's going to be really enjoyable to try and. Um, you know, give it my best on that PGA Tour and, and see what I can do. So, yeah, I, I've got some really cool doors opening um, the next sort of 12 months, two years. And, yeah, I just, as long as I stick to who I am and I keep doing what I need to do to play well, I think we'll be fine. <laughs>